All right, welcome. We are now going to call this meeting to order, our board meeting on February 17th, 2022, for the Wiseburn Unified School District. This is a special meeting uh, in which we will interview potential candidates for the current vacant board seat. Welcome our volunteer board members. Thank you for the contributions you've made this week. It's been a busy week. <laughs> Good to see you again tonight. At this time, I ask for a motion to adopt the agenda, please. We have a motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you very much, Joanne. Ms. Zubaki, vote, please. Mr. Ben Lalouk. Aye. Dr. Goldman. Aye. Mr. Martinez. Aye. Ms. Kinnett. Aye. Now we'll move to the flag salute as we start all our meetings. Dr. Silvers, if you would be so kind. And place the right hand over your heart. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll now move to, I believe it was 2.2 on our agenda. From the public, do we have any public comments at this time? I do not have any public comments at this time. All right, seeing no public comments, we will now move to the entire sole purpose of our meeting, which is candidate interviews. We will begin the candidate interviews at 4.15 with our first candidate. Until then, we will be in recess. We will now reconvene and welcome our first applicant, uh, Ms. Acosta, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you for, uh, we appreciate you applying and coming for the interview today. Thank you. This interview will last, uh, it's designed for about 30 minutes. It could go as long as 40 minutes. Dr. Silvers will be on timer. It will be a series of 10 questions. We will alternate those questions and the district will inform all of our candidates via electronic mail as to the board's decision once concluded. And our goal is to complete this process before our next board meeting on the 24th so our candidate can be seated. Again, thank you for being with us today. We are glad to have you with us. Thank you. Let's begin. Excellent. I have the first question. Welcome. Thank you. Please tell us a little about yourself, including, including your and your children's involvement in Weissburn schools and why you are applying for the vacancy. I am a almost 14 year resident of the district. Um, we moved when my child was two years old. That's when we purchased our home. I mean, sorry, two weeks old. And that's when we purchased our home. Um, my husband had previously lived in the district. So we spent two years looking for a home in the district. Um, one of the reasons was because of the small school district. Um, my child has attended school. Um, she attended several years with um, Alex and Willow, so our board member's son. Um, and she's currently in the eighth grade. Um, can you ask? Yes, the other part was, um, and tell us why you are applying for the vacancy. Um, I am an active member of the community, and I feel that it's uh, an opportunity to continue to serve the community in, in a greater way. All right, second question is mine. Uh, being a board member demands more personal time than attending meetings twice a month. Will you have any problems attending regular meetings, plus occasional workshops, conferences, or subcommittee meetings? How flexible is your work schedule, and would your employer allow you to miss work on occasion to let you participate in certain board activities? I am a stay-at-home parent, so my, my flexibility is there, my availability is there. Um, you know, it would be in consultation with anything that my child has going on. However, I feel that I do have a, an open and flexible schedule. Great. I have the next question. Welcome. How do you see the difference? And mine's a two part question. How do you see the difference between what board members do and what the administration does? And what type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and employees organization? So for the question about the relationship between the board and the administration, 
I think it's a collaboration uh, between the two. Um, definitely, you know, receiving, you know, reports and information about everything going on within the schools, uh, how things are operating. You know, the board's uh, capacity is to, my understanding, to make decisions in the best interest of our students. Um, you know, whether it be financially, you know, um, looking into what uh, what are the requirements, you know, from the state. Uh, just a variety of things. So I, I believe that it's a collaboration and from what I see, it's a good collaboration between the two. What was the rest of your question? Um, what type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent and employees or administration? Um, definitely open communication. Um, I know that there are a variety of, of issues, you know, whether it be, you know, with, um, Having you know the the staff in terms of you know whatever their unions or contracts or whatever guidelines there are, um, but just having that open communication of their needs and the understanding of the board in um, working together definitely um, just to move forward for the best interest of our students because that's what we're really here for is is to advocate for the interest of the students. Okay, hey, deep breath. Hello. Based on your absence, this is also kind of a two part, so I'll read the first part. Take a little minute and this part. Based on your observations of the board, what do you think are the most essential attributes that a good board member must possess? And describe for us some experiences you've had in your personal or professional life where you have successfully used these attributes. So for one, I believe uh, a board member needs to be open-minded, um, understanding uh, that we serve a diverse community and listening to the needs of the diverse community. So as a board member, you're not serving yourself and your family, you're serving the whole community. Um, Please continue with the question. Sure. Let me submit this one again for you. <laughs> so that I know. There's a the lot being thrown at you all at one time here. Based on your observations of the board, first of all, what do you think are the most essential attributes that a good board member must possess? So definitely open-minded, fair. Um, and just seeking seeking the information and having the adequate information to make decisions. Okay. And the second part is, given those uh, qualities that you mentioned, um, describe some experiences that you've had either in your personal or professional life where you've successfully applied these attributes. Um, so my previous employment experiences in municipal government, I used to be employed by a city. I worked in the city manager's office. Um, so I would field constituent concerns. Um, I had to learn not to take uh, those concerns personally, but to listen open minded, open mindedly, uh, be non judgmental, um, gather information to help, you know, um, make the best decisions or refer them to the best location. Um, so that's some of some of the things that a board member needs to do is you know, be open-minded, listen non-judgmentally, get all of the information to make an appropriate decision that's best for, for the students, for our community, for everyone. I think I have to again for a, any specific examples where you utilize these qualities. I believe that I've, I've advocated within our community for, you know, different um, things. I think more recently, one of the things that we've worked on, well, that I have participated in actually relates to the school, uh, to the school board in terms of uh, our citizens advisory committee and being open-minded. I know that I did serve in the um, uh, 138th Street School. Um, but in our discussions, I did bring up that there were various opinions on, on the whole renaming process and that 
as a whole, we needed to be open minded to that because it is a very sensitive topic. And I know we've moved forward with that, but I feel that I've been part of that process um, from the beginning and advocating for it, but also being open minded and trying to bring in community members to um, express their views and concerns. Thank you very much. I have the next question. What is your vision for education in our community? And as a board member, what would be your top three priorities for the district? Can you please repeat the question? Sure. What is your vision for education in our community? And as a board member, what would be your top three priorities for the district? My vision for education in our community is um, to incorporate the needs of, of the children in, in terms of not all children learn in the same manner. So having um, opportunities for them to learn in a way that is best for them. So we do have students that maybe have special needs, maybe have, um, you know, certain certain issues on in understanding, you know, we have, you know, students that may be on the spectrum. Um, so definitely addressing all the needs of all the students and it's not a one size fits all educational system. So there has to be different ways of addressing needs of all students. Can you repeat the next portion? I'm sorry. And the second one, as a board member, what would be your top three priorities? Um, so priorities for the district, um, definitely it's always uh, a safety of our students, um, definitely um, enhancing their education. Um, I know that my child benefited from um, the CGI math, you know, so having those types of programs that allow students to flourish in different ways. Um, so staying at the forefront of, of different types of learning um, to engage our students and moving forward to be productive citizens. Um, and definitely um, communicating with our community at large. I feel that sometimes there are community members that feel maybe don't feel left out because they don't have students within the district and they're not aware of what's going on. And in some ways they just may not know how to be involved in, in the decisions of the district. Thank you. Obviously the next one's mine. You probably figured out our path. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the Da Vinci Charter Schools and how do you view the relationship between the district and the Da Vinci Charters? Um, I will say <laughs> after Tuesday night's meeting, um, you know, there, there is room for improvement. Um, you know, we came to this district when that was a process, you know, and, and voting for the unification and you know, all, of, all of those uh, steps along the way. And having a child that was not yet in school, it was very important for us, you know, to say like, by the time my child's in high school, they will have a high school. Um, so I see that it, it's, it's a difficult relationship because of, you know, the legislation that passed and, you know, having those constraints, but I do see progress in terms of having these joint board meetings, uh, definitely having collaboration, um, accountability. That was something that I think was brought up was accountability in terms of as a Weisberg Unified School District Board, there is accountability to all the students in our district because we are a uni uh, unified school district K through 12. So even though our board doesn't oversee their board, there has to be a collaboration and there has to be an understanding. Um, so I see that, that the Da Vinci schools is a positive because, you know, it's it's a school that we pay into that our my child uh, can potentially go to. Um, so, like I said, it, it needs to be a collaboration, um, but I do see that there are there may be some some roadblocks some difficulties, you know, some hard questions to be asked, but it's all a process. So it's a process that we need to work together uh, to to do what's best for the students and for the community. Thank you. One more question here. What would you do during a public meeting if you strongly disagreed with the position taken by another board member or a statement another board member 
um, wait. Um, I would have to take a deep breath, step back, um, imagine what what would bring that board member to that maybe, you know, step in their shoes, you know, how, how did they come to that, um, that comment or decision? Um, you know, I, I do have experience with, um, I used to be um, a helpline listener and trainer for crisis intervention. So um, just having that non-judgmental frame of mind. And I think that's something to enter the room, you know, to enter the room, not just, you know, um, in that moment when someone says something you don't agree with, but definitely taking a step back, formulating your thoughts, um, definitely, you know, we don't want to have any, <laughs> any fights break out in the boardroom, um, uh, but I, I think acting very civilly and, um, and maybe, you know, just Voicing a, a concern in a non-judgmental way, in a professional manner, in a civil manner, um, and taking a step back to maybe address it at another time. Okay, hello again. If a parent phones you about a problem his or her child encountered at school, what would you advise the parent to do and what would you do after that conversation? So I would advise the parent to contact the school and contact the school administrator because they are the ones that are in charge of that school. They know what is going on at the school, what their policies and procedures are for situations. So I would redirect them to the school administration and I would follow up with the school administration that I had been contacted and would like to know that there is follow-up and something taking place. It's one thing to refer someone, but it's another thing to follow up and say, did this actually take place? Because it will come back to you that maybe you didn't do anything when it's actually a need of the parent to go to the administration and not necessarily, you know, um, it's directing where it needs to take place. Thank you. Right, back to me. <laughs> what would you say different, differentiates you from other candidates and or board members? What valuable qualities, experiences, or attributes do you feel you would bring to the board? So like I said, I'm a stay-at-home parent. <laughs> so um, I think that's one difference, <laughs> you know, different thing. Um, I have been very involved in the schools, and I have seen um, the involvement that's happened, you know, with the schools, um, with the facilities, uh, with, you know, changes in the classroom, uh, changes in curriculum, um, volunteering. And so getting to know various levels, I would say, um, helps. Um, I, I definitely am a community advocate. Um, you know, I do things that maybe uh, some people are not aware of. I call when the solar uh, speed limit sign is not out. I contact the person uh, who's uh, the supervisor for the crossing guards when I notice there's no crossing guard. Um, so there are just a, a variety of things that I do to advocate for our students in our schools that um, maybe people don't, don't know that I do. Um, but I, I follow through and I try to um, you know, make an impact. Was there another part to, to your question that I did not answer? I think you covered it. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So you, this is the final question. You, you, you made it to the last question. Um, not that you wouldn't, but I mean, it's just letting you know. <laughs> um, it is a two part uh, and it's kind of an opportunity for you to bring your own thoughts uh, to us. What are your thoughts in running the vacant board seat in November, 2022 in the actual election? And then the second part is any clothing thoughts, remarks, or questions. So the first again, what are your thoughts on running for the vacant board seat in November? Um, you know, this is just a new opportunity right now. So I have not investigated what is required to run in the election. So that would be something that I would need to research before making a commitment to do so. Um, but I will be researching that information to understand the process. And 
And um, I'm just thankful for this opportunity to, you know, come before you, answer the questions, um, put my name in, you know, uh, to possibly have a seat at the board um, to make an impact for our students, our community. Um, you know, this is just an, an opportunity to do something more, something fulfilling, a little more fulfilling. Um, you know, being a stay-at-home mother is wonderful, um, but I have not been gainfully employed uh, in the last 14 years. Um, my, my employment basically has been being a community advocate. And, and this would be just another opportunity to, to make a, a difference in our community. Anything else you'd like to add? Thank you. Thank you for your time. I know this is a difficult time and that you have a vacancy. <laughs> You're probably going, who's going to fill that vacancy? Will they um, jive with our, our, our cohesive group? Um, I think this is a, a unique opportunity. I don't know when, when it's happened before. I haven't seen it in, in the time that I've been participating and, and watching the meetings. Um, so it's just, um, it's, it's a time of, uh, of change. And I know that that uh, brings some anxiety. And um, I just, you know, want to say thank you. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come before you and, and answer your questions and, and the possibility for a board position. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate you coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. We will now go in recess for about 15 minutes. We will now reconvene as we await the arrival of our next candidate. Appreciate you applying yeah. for this opportunity and for coming to this interview. So thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. The interview will be a series of 10 questions. Okay. We will alternate. We'll last about 30 minutes, up to no more than 40 minutes, and Dr. Silvers will be our timer. Okay. Uh, the district will inform candidates via electronic mail as to the board selection once concluded, and our goal is to complete the process and swear in a candidate as a new board okay. member on our next board meeting, February 24th. Okay, cool. Uh, again, thank you for being here, uh, here today. Glad to have you with us. Yeah. Uh, Roger, we'll ask the first question. Let's begin. Great. Thank sure, you. Sir. Welcome. Thanks. I have the first question. Okay. Please tell us a little about yourself, including your and your children's involvement in Weisberg schools. Sure. And why you are applying for the vacancy. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, about myself, I'm uh, an engineer. I work at Raytown. We live in um, Colleague Land on, on 39th. We moved in since 2013. We've been here about nine years. Um, my son is four, so we actually just had our uh, TK uh, Cabrillo um, open house virtual tour uh, this morning. So that was pretty cool and really exciting. Um, so we're you know we're we're applying for him to enter TK at Cabrillo um, in the fall. Um, and in terms of our involvement, like I said, we, uh, you know, Jack's four, so we're just getting into the school district and we always knew coming into the neighborhood that that's where we wanted to be because we have learned a lot about the school district and how good it is and good reputation. So we always kind of had that plan and it's kind of exciting for it to actually be coming to fruition and uh, being able to be more involved and um, instead of just kind of like a parent on the outside kind of uh, hearing the stories and kind of, you know, looking forward to those new experiences. Um, so I guess I'm definitely a newcomer to the district and in terms of involvement, but uh, in terms of why I applied is, uh, you know, where I want to ramp up our involvement, get, get involved and, and really, um, I feel like, uh, getting involved early will make sure that I, you know, I'm able to really contribute over the years as, you know, Jack grows through the school district and, you know, we have another kid. So, um, yeah, so just 
really starting wanting to get into it and involved and try and make a difference and, and make sure that you know the reputation is continues and you know great things are about for you know the entire community and, yeah okay yeah okay second question is mine uh, being a board member demands more personal time than attending meetings just twice a month sure will you have any problems attending regular meetings plus occasional workshops conferences and subcommittee meetings how flexible is your work schedule and would your employer allow you to miss work on occasion to let you participate in certain board activities yeah, um, my employer is pretty flexible. There are there are you know times where I have to travel, but it's you know right now it's like never. But you know before COVID, you know it's probably once a quarter I would be gone for a week back east to Maryland where our customer is. Um, you know so that would be kind of difficult to work around. But uh, other than that, um, uh, things are pretty flexible and able to work work stuff out. Um, really, just make sure we get the work done. And, I understand this would be a commitment. It's not just show up for the meetings and be there. So, and I wouldn't want that to be because, I, like I said earlier, I want to be involved and I want to help. Um, you know, make it as good as can be for everybody. So. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Thanks. How do you how do you see the? It's a two part question. Okay. How do you see the difference between what board members do and what the administration does, and what type of working relationship? Would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and the uh, employee organizations? Yeah, so I mean that's a great question, especially for me because I don't really have a lot of visibility like leading up to this. Other than like growing up as a kid, like you know I kind of saw my parents kind of interfacing with the, the school district and how all that worked. My mother was a teacher, so I got you know, some of the stories that you know after school like of what's going on and you know the background of the administration side of it. Um, but. So it would definitely be a learning experience for me, which I, I want, right? And I want to, to grow in that way. Um, I guess from what I do know is, you know, a lot of the involvement is, um, well, I guess I don't really know. I mean, from my perspective, it'd be, the board would be advising on like kind of larger uh, long-term issues that help guide, um, uh, I guess, uh, donations and uh, organizational um, interactions outside of the school district, trying to engage the community. Um, whereas the superintendent of administration would be more today, day to day operations with uh, managing the, you know, the, the staff and the teachers, and um, and working with more of the kind of tactical stuff. And it also blends all together, right? But you know, that's kind of how I view from the outside. Hi. A um, couple of parts to this question, so sure. don't be afraid to ask me to say it again if, okay. if you're not comfortable. Based on your observations of the board, what do you think are the most essential attributes of a good board member? What do you think the attributes a board member must possess? And keep that in mind, yeah. describe for us some experiences you've had in your personal or professional life where you've successfully used these attributes. Sure. Um, so, like I said earlier, I, I see the board as more of a, you know, kind of higher level guidance, you know, organization. And my job, I'm right now on the on the technical leadership team for you know, pretty very large program. That's really what I do day to day. Is it's more of the you know stand back and really try and see the big picture and uh, understand. You know, understand the big picture, but also you really need to understand all the details behind everything to really help provide guidance and um, and shape where things are going to go and help if there's conflict. You know, try to bring people together and um, you know, kind of work that. So, I mean, I guess I I feel like my current role at work right now is it's it's kind of a governance uh, advisory type role. I mean, there's definitely a lot of um, you know tactical like. Uh, Doing a work, but really my main role is to try and, um, and provide guidance and, and um, kind of be the, the hand on the till type of thing and try and keep things going even when all the ways are going kind of crazy. So, okay. Okay. If you oh. wanted to give us some, a specific example, obviously no names, but yeah. just something, uh, a specific example of a quality that you feel is important and what you did. 
Yeah, um, just trying to think of a, a good example. So, I mean, so the technical review board is what we do at work, and um, and it's really big problems about that need to get fixed. So it's like, hey, you know, we have this really big problem and it needs to get fixed, and here are the different options, and really. The role is to try and ask the right questions and flush out what the nuances are behind the different decisions and make sure that everybody is contributing involved in it because sometimes you, you know, there's a bunch of different personalities. So some people are quiet or, you know, for whatever reason, they don't really want to speak up and, you know, trying to make sure that they're given an opportunity to do that in a way that's constructive and, you know, and really all those soft skills are trying to make sure that everybody stays involved. So that's like, I guess, the technical review board is, you know, people bring, you know, hey, here's the engineering problem, here's what I want to do about it. A bunch of people jump up and down and say, no, that's a dumb idea. We want to do it this way. And it's kind of kind of iron it all out and bring everybody to a consensus to and then kind of move out on that consensus in a way that's achievable. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I have the next question. Yeah. What is your vision for education in our community? And as a board member, what would be your top three priorities for the district? Okay, um, so I guess the top three priorities, I'll kind of go that way. Um, it's, I guess, uh, from being somebody who's just getting involved in it, it's like trying to get broad engagement across, um, you know, as much of the community as we can. Uh, at least when I was growing up, you know, I spoke to, um, you know, my mother was a teacher and kind of heard some of the stories about that. And at least from that perspective, it, there was a lot of focused engagement, but it wasn't necessarily broad. Like, um, you know, there would be something that's happening and people would engage or people are, you know, some people are just more engaged than others. Um, so trying to encourage and draw that broad engagement out, like I spoke to earlier about my job work and trying to make sure that it's not just the people that have a strong opinion are the ones that are you know, speaking their opinion that everybody kind of, you know, sometimes people need prodding and trying to get all that engagement into so that we get the complete picture and that's number one. Um, number two, I guess, would be to, um, well, I mean, really, that's number one for me. I mean, I don't really have a number two and three, to tell you the truth, just because uh, the data have been as engaged. Um, you know, so I don't have that one. That's my big one. Okay. And then, uh, sorry, what was the other part of the question? First part was uh, share with us your vision for education in our community. Yeah. So, I mean, my vision for education kind of was, uh, it was kind of cool. I watched the, uh, or we participated in the, um, the uh, virtual tour for the Korea elementary school. And it kind of like checked all my boxes, like from growing up, it's like, yeah, we're gonna uh, interface with the kids and really listen to what they want, need to learn and understand each individual's um, learning style and where they are. And you know, if they're falling behind, it goes to the learning um, center or learning. Um, with the, you know, but, but they kind of go there and they get extra help and they pop back out. Kind of that, um, the biggest thing for education for me is that uh, it's a two-way communication system between the teachers, the students, and also the parents. I guess it's four-way or multi-way. <laughs> everybody being involved in, in trying to ensure that you know, every kid is, um, is understood and because everybody's different and trying to help uh, get active engagement and their learning experience tailored to make sure that everybody's kind of going up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, my next question. Sure. You're on question six. Oh, cool. Back with that. What do you, exactly. What do you think about the Da Vinci Charter Schools and how do you view the relationship between the district and the Da Vinci Charters? Yeah, so I guess that's really your question too because uh, up until about a couple weeks ago, I thought that it was all kind of intermix and it's not right so um so that was kind of yeah so that was interesting to me and um i guess i don't really have a clear understanding of what the involvement other, other than the fact that they're two different organizations and they're kind of not two different organizations at the same time and so i mean i would love for the vision to be that it's all you know unified under one thing but you know I, there are realities about doing that and i don't like I said, I, I don't know the nuances of everything. So that'd be one thing I want to learn about and try and uh, get engaged in. Um, but in terms of what I've heard about the Da Vinci schools, um, you know, I, I really have always been attracted to 
like we said earlier, uh, you know, personalized learning for, for the kids. I, mean, I, I like the model of, um, you know, it, it being kind of centered around uh, what kids are, you know, really attracted to and motivated by. Um, I also, you know, at, at times of concern that, you know, it, it's also, we need to make sure that it's, you know, a broad experience base, especially for, well, for anybody at any age, but, you know, it's making sure that, you know, we don't let people kind of silo and without a broad experience base. So um, that'd be the concern I have about the model, but, you know, it's, it's a give and take. Like the other way, it's like people don't really, like, they, aren't, they aren't really as engaged as necessarily they could be because they aren't really, uh, uh, I guess, excited about the material and how they're going for it. So. Thank you. Yeah. Next question. What would you do during a public meeting if you strongly disagreed with the position taken by another board member or a statement another board member made? Um, well, so what I do at work is I ask questions because usually it's because they don't understand, you know, what was said or why it was said or the context. So I do ask questions about trying to better understand the position and where they're coming from. And, and then I would lead to a discussion about, you know, what we both feel or, you know, see about it. Yeah, we ask questions. phones you about a problem his or her child encountered at school, what would you invite the parent to do? And what would you do after the conversation? Um, that's a really good one. So, so, I mean, I would advise them to talk to the principal or superintendent, like, and after that, I would call the, you know, the superintendent um, or, or the principal, or whoever. If I talk to you guys, I'd be like, hey, go on a super call, but it'd probably be if I didn't have your numbers immediately, no one told me anything, I'd go talk to the superintendent and say, hey, you know, this person called me, they talked to me about this issue, I told them to give you a call, I told them to give you a heads up. And, um, anyway. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. What would you say differentiates you from other candidates and or board members? And what valuable qualities, experiences, or attributes do you feel you would bring to the board? Sure. I think my biggest, uh, I guess, distinction is that I'm not uh, that involved with the district as it is. So I, you know, I feel like I can provide, you know, fresh energy in terms of, you know, someone who really wants to learn about everything and understand it, and, and maybe um, you know, provide some. I don't know. Just you know, when you have someone that's around that really wants to learn about something and is motivated and has a lot of energy, it just kind of, like, in my work, it. You know, it helps bring everybody up and get everybody engaged. So, I think that's my biggest attribute, um, or I guess distinction, is that, you know, and then also that, I, you know, we're just getting into the district in terms of, you know, our, our son. So, you know, we have a long trajectory of being involved. And so, it's, uh, you know, stable in terms of, you know, we're in the neighborhood. I work around my corner. I want to stay here. My family's in Redondo and Ventura, so we're not going anywhere. Um, I think that was the first part. What was the second part? Or did I skip over? That was uh, what differentiates you. And then the second part was what valuable qualities, experiences, or attributes do you feel you would bring to the board? Yeah, so um, attributes, I guess, uh, you know, motivated, uh, love to learn, really excited about being involved and understanding more about the work and the district and how it all works. And, and by doing that, help, you know, help in that process and help do the work, right? Um, and in terms of experiences, um, you know, at my job, I, I work for right now, you know, Concord Town Street, and, you know, we have to deal with a lot of, or, you know, work with a lot of um, different uh, viewpoints, both from our customer side, internal governance, and HR, and, and so my experiences there are just, uh, I guess, you know, being on the leadership team of a very large program, a big company will help. I think uh, provide perspectives or challenging times, and also, um, you know, I can use the, the tool sets that are maybe successful, make me successful there, here to help, um, you know, you know, tackle the problems that, that we're trying to come up. Okay. Yeah. Question number 10. Cool. Ask a question. All right. Okay. 
questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on running for the vacant board seat in November 22? And then secondly, any closing thoughts, remarks, or questions? So um, to tell you the truth, I didn't know there was a vacancy until I applied for the job and saw that there was a question that, you know, are you gonna apply for it? So I, I think I answered yes, but I, um, you know, I, I definitely am involved and interested in doing it. I haven't uh, taken the time to really understand what you have to do to, you know, actually run for office and stuff like that. But, um, you know, sitting here today, yes, I, I would love to do that and be more involved. So, um, and then the last one, any closing thoughts, remarks, or questions? No, I just uh, thank you guys for the time to, to have me in here. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited whether, you know, I'm, I'm selected or not, just to be more involved over the years. And look forward to, you know, spending more time with you guys, whether I'm on the board or not. So, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in today. Yeah. You bet. Okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yep. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be in recess now until our next candidate. <laughs> we will now uh, reconvene and await our next. <laughs> reconvene and we for our next our candidate. Well, but it just broke the top. I remember, I think I left marks on the table one time. It really got so rocky. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I'm fortunate to be a lawyer by training um, and have worked in the nonprofit field uh, and as an advocate for over a decade. Hard to believe that I've been a lawyer for almost 20 years. <laughs> um, but, uh, but in all of that space uh, and in all of the advocacy work that I've done, I think um, just having that holistic big picture and being able to really um, have all of the people, all of the constituents involved, uh, their goals in mind when we're making decisions has been really important. And the idea of public service is just something that has been instilled with me from a young age. It's one of the reasons why I became a lawyer in the first place. Uh, I was a workers' rights attorney, civil rights attorney, so always big picture, giving back, um, volunteering in the community, making a difference has been a bedrock. And I just saw this as a um, an opportunity to step in to that role and uh, take on uh, more of more of that uh, responsibility for myself and the community. Is that all of your questions? <laughs> There's more than your question. <laughs> so number two is mine, and we'll take turns here. Being a board member demands more personal time than attending meetings twice a month. Will you have any problems attending regular meetings, plus occasional workshops, conferences, and subcommittees? How flexible is your work schedule, or would your employer allow you to miss work on occasion to let you participate in certain activities for the board? Yeah, so um, so I am a single mom, um, and I've been and I uh, before I took a full time job in uh, June of last year, I was a small business owner, um, and even the position that I'm in right now um, is a full work from home position. Um, so it's a hundred percent remote, and I don't anticipate that changing anytime soon. So I would say that my schedule is is pretty flexible during the day in terms of work, for that very reason. Um, and and uh, the work that I do right now is for a, an organization that works in California politics. And so I think there's also a level of understanding <laughs> about the role of a school board member and what it would mean to serve in this type of position. Um, so they, I have talked to my employer about the fact that I was applying for the position and, um, and he's very, my boss is very supportive of um, of that, and um, I have a very supportive mom who we live with, who's used to taking on some of the caregiving responsibilities for the kids. And uh, you know, I, like I said, I serve on the board of WEF. I serve on other boards of other nonprofits. So I'm used to taking time away from work or at nights and weekends and all of that. Rock around the blocks coming up, you know. <laughs> it all takes time and energy, and um, and so we're all we're all in for it. And, I'm looking forward to that. We know what we're getting into. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thanks. I have a two-part question. Okay. How do you see the difference between what board members do and what the administration does? And what type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and employee organizations? So um, for the first part of the question, my um, understanding of the difference between the board and the administration administration is, I think, as with a number of, you know, let's, let's take, take nonprofits as an example, the board serves an oversight function, right? Um, our job would be to review the decisions that are made at a high level to help make those decisions that are about sort of the framework in which we're making um, decisions and maybe approve of the highest level decisions, whereas the day-to-day -day of how decisions are carried out and, um, and what those, what the right course of action might be in the recommendation should all come from the administration from the from the staff. So that's how I view the, the difference between the, the board and the administration. Um, and then the second part of the question, could you repeat for me? Absolutely. What type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and employee organizations? Yeah, so um so obviously the employees are the backbone of the district. So you want to make sure that the organizations that represent them. Like you said, I was a workers' rights attorney. I didn't do labor law. I did employee law, which there is a distinction. <laughs> um, but I understand that distinction. I think there's a there's a huge important role that, that unions play because individual employees can't have a say um, in everything that happens. And they need to have, you know, sort of that um, uh, an equal way in which to interact with the, with the body that has that holds all the purse strings related to 
So, so you want to have an amicable relationship, a working relationship, um, but one where folks can feel like they can come, I think, to the board with questions and concerns um, of each other. Um, it's sort of, again, we're serving that oversight role of um, making sure that the relationships are running smoothly and that questions and concerns are being addressed and helping to find a path forward um, that's chemical for, both, for all of the sides and, and then making sure that, that that's in the best interest of the district and the children and the schools um, and, and what we need to do about it. I also have a multi-part question. All right. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Okay. That did flow pretty well. So. Based on your observations of the board, what do you think are the most essential attributes of a good board member? That's the first part. And then describe for us some experiences you've had in your personal or professional life in which you've successfully used a cap. Sure. Um, so I think the first um, important attribute is being a good listener, um, being able, being willing to hear what everybody has to say and remaining um, just passionate, I think, in some ways about listening to the information that you're receiving and then making a decision. I think that's, that's one. Um, I think another important um, attribute is um, being uh, curious and willing to ask questions and to understand where people are coming from when they're bringing the information that they're bringing to you, whether it's from the administration or from the public about their concerns. Um, or wherever that may come from. I think those are probably the two most important things that I see. Um, and I think also just being open-minded about um, what is happening, not coming in with sort of preconceived notions. Obviously we all come with our background and experiences, our own personal expertise, and I expect board members to bring those to um, inform decisions that are made, but also to, to keep an open mind about how decisions should be made that are that are in the best interest of um, of the district. So, so that's the attribute side, and um, and honestly, those are the skills that I bring every day <laughs> um, to my job, to the work that I do, whether it's as a parent <laughs> uh, when the six and nine year olds are fighting. You gotta <laughs> you gotta be able to mediate that dispute in a way that doesn't take sides, and um, you know, make sure that you're kids know that they you love them both equally <laughs> um even if one's in the wrong sometimes um so so you know i think as a parent i, I use those skills every day i think um in my role as uh in, in my nonprofit executive role i use those skills every day i'm working with not only grantee organizations who are coming to us with funding needs and um the desire to, to make a difference in their community, but also with high net worth individuals, donors, who were trying to bring and understand where their interests lie so that I could help them navigate where the best place is for them to put their funding to make a difference in the communities that we're trying to make, trying to serve. So really looking at both sides of those issues, I, I do that all the time. Um, and as a, as a board member for the various organizations that I've served on, you know, again, we have you have to keep your eye on the big picture, um, and then also be be open to hearing um, differences of opinions. I think some of the best ideas and solutions <laughs> come when you hear from someone that you that you weren't expecting to hear from, or when someone who doesn't often speak up speaks up about something. So, thank you. I have the next question. Sure. What is, what is your vision for education in our community? And as a board member, what would be your top three priorities for the district? Okay. So I haven't memorized my answer in the, in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the thing. Maybe I should have. But um, uh, so my vision for education in the district is that um, every child, regardless of who they are, what their background or circumstances are, is seen and is able to get a quality education, um, whether they're, sorry, I get very passionate about the, uh, you know, um, especially our students with special needs and making sure that they are student heard. Um, sorry, didn't expect to do that, it's fine. <laughs> okay. 
um, but um, anyway, so, so I think that's the, that's my number one thing is just making sure that our schools are responsive um, to all of our families, regardless of um, whether they're uh, whether their parents are able to advocate for them or or not, or whether um, we have the the skills and ability to to see them. So that's I think the first thing that I see. I want all of our students to be ready and prepared for what the world will be like when they leave us too. Um, I think that's that's also um, incredibly important. Um, so um, I think in terms of priorities for the district, um, I think making sure that children feel safe at school um, is is very important. Um, that we have uh, that are also that our teachers and staff um, feel that they are supported and and have an environment in which they can. Um, deliver the best education to our students. I think some of the best teachers that we've had in the district have been the ones who've been willing to innovate and to, you know, think outside of the box and been given that um, that ability. So, um, so I think that's the sort of number one for me is is on that front. Um, I think number two is embracing the diversity of um, of our community and again making sure that um, all of our um, our students, whether they are permit students, whether they're family, because I know there's a large population of students that come from outside of the district just because of the nature of where we are and, um, and all of that. And, um, and I think there's also a large percentage of students who are not, we have, I think the character of the neighborhood is changing, right? So we have a lot of families who are moving in with greater means, but we have a lot of families that are still in the district who aren't as affluent. And I wanna make sure that they're all um, that, that we are embracing that diversity and making sure that we, I think it's just one of the strengths of the district and continuing to make sure that that um, is, uh, is seen and heard. Um, and, then, um, and then finally, I think, um, I think it's really important that we um, live into our mission of, um, of being a K through 12 district um, and that we're, we have programs that are articulating from our youngest learners all the way up through the, through the high schools and making sure that those pathways of communication and um, collaboration are there. Um, and we're, we're doing that in the way that's, that's the best to serve the entire student population. Thank you. All right, so you're on question six. Okay. Uh, <laughs> What do you think score. about? I'm sorry. I said a 14 week score. <laughs> there's, there's, there's 10. Give you a heads up. Uh, what do you think about the Da Vinci Charter Schools, and how do you view the relationship between the district and the Da Vinci Schools? Um, so I've had a little bit of interaction with the with Da Vinci Schools in my role with with Left. Um, I served as interim executive director for a while, um, and then I've obviously been on the board. Um, I think Da Vinci um, is doing a lot of innovative thinking about how students should learn. Um, the, the high school doesn't look like the high school that I went to, to you know, <laughs> to school in. Um, it's not the same kind of um, thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's it's definitely, you know, like I said, in, you know, my priorities, right? It, innovation is is important and thinking outside of the box. And so I think there is a role for, for the Da Vinci schools to play. They play an important role um, in the community. I would like to see, um, more communication and openness. I watched the board meeting earlier this week, and you know, um, I think there's there's work to be done. I think everybody acknowledged that there's there's an ongoing um, um, work that needs to be done to strengthen that relationship and figure out what the right path forward is. And again, I think it depends on on the goals of the district and and what the best service is going to be for that nine plus population. Um, so. Thank you. Next question. Do you want to break that tissue really quick? I got some more. Yeah. I'm just gonna be prepared. Mask me is real. Thank you. Uh, question number seven. What would you 
do during a public meeting if you strongly disagreed with the position taken by another board member or a statement another board member made? Um, so I think that it's very important to maintain decorum, you know, and to be professional. We're all here doing a job. I think we have to not take things personally. Um, I would personally re refrain from spurious personal attacks <laughs> on another person. Um, I think that's incredibly important. Um, I have been in board meetings where people have lost their temper or their cool, and that's not cool. It's not, you know, you have to re remain respectful. Um, and I think there's always a way to respectfully disagree with someone. And people can be passionate, and you can agree to disagree sometimes. But um, like I said, my my day to day work is is in politics and. And my background is as a lawyer, so I'm very used to being in situations where people disagree vehemently, and you can still be cordial and kind. Um, and I think that's that's what you what, what you should do. I think if you disagree, you should share your disagreement and and speak up. But there's a way to do it that's respectful and and again is about how you're feeling about the situation, and it's not a personal attack on on the other. If a parent phoned you about a problem <coughs> his or her child encountered at school, what would you advise the parent to do, first part? And then what would you do after the conversation? Um, so I, I think it would depend on the situation, obviously. Um, I'll give you the lawyer answer. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> um, I think. The first thing I would do is listen to them carefully, give them a, give them the opportunity to be heard. Obviously, they're calling for a reason and they, they deserve to, to be heard. Um, I think I would remind them of my role and position, you know, with the board and that I wouldn't want to give any advice or um, comment out of turn about that. Um, I would try to direct them to the most appropriate person within the district, whether that's in the administration or back to the school principal or to the teacher, I think, again, it's going to depend on what the situation is. My um, philosophy in life is generally if I don't have the answer, I know how to find it. <laughs> um, so, you know, if someone came to me with an, with an issue like that, I would want to help them problem solve. Um, but but do it in a way that is mindful and respectful of the of the position that I would hold on the board, you know, um, in line with that. Yeah, remember the second part, because that was the first part. Okay, what would you do after that conversation? After the conversation. So again, I think I, it depends on what the issue was. Um, I think if I had referred them to somebody, I would probably reach out to that person and give them a heads up that I had made the referral. Um, whether it was to the superintendent or to the board or to the principal or whomever it was. Um, if it was an issue that I thought needed more, you know, that there was something else for us as a board to do, um, I would go through whatever the channels would be to bring the issue forward to the extent that that was the follow up. So again, I think it would just depend on what the, what the issue is that the parent brings. I think sometimes the, um, Sometimes there's nothing for you to do, right? Because it's, you know, they needed a listening ear, but there, there's no, there's nothing to do. And then I think other times there, you know, if you promised to, to look into something, you look into it. And um, if you've given someone's name out, you know, I always want to make sure that I give a heads up to that person, that, you know, to expect that call. So, mm -hmm. next question. What would you say differentiates? differentiates you from other candidates and or board members, what valuable qualities, experiences, or attributes do you feel you would bring to the board? Yeah, so um, I think I've mentioned a few of what I think are some of my unique attributes um, already tonight, so I'll reiterate a couple of them. One, I'm a mom of um, elementary age kids in the district, and I think that's a unique perspective right now among the current board. Um, I think, you know, some of you have had kids that have gone all the way through the schools, but it's been a few years since you've been at the elementary schools. Um, so I think there's that perspective. Um, 
I'm, like I said, a lawyer by training. I have that experience. I have the experience of working in the, the nonprofit world for a long time um, and, and understanding, you know, what that looks like. And um, I know there are board members who have also experienced, you know, in some of the same areas um, as me. But um, I think the combination of experiences that I bring is, is unique and would be helpful um, and useful. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, when issues come before, before the board that I just would be able to, to do that. I, um, and the other thing is I'm a, I'm a single mom, um, there, I would bring another gender, <laughs> another, uh, another woman to the board. So that there's that just like in terms of demographics, um, I'm also Latina, so I don't think I help in that respect. Um, <laughs> Recess until 6:43 or so for our next candidate. We'll now reconvene as we await our next applicant.
Hello. Welcome. I'm sure my phone might be on. I don't want that to be that person. That's your spot. That's your spot. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. Hello. Hello. And, and welcome. Welcome, Ms. Doherty. Nice to have you here. Thank you very much for being here today. We really appreciate you applying for this important position and for coming to this interview. Thank you. Uh, this interview will last 30 minutes up to 40 minutes. There'll be 10 questions, and Dr. Silvers will be our, our, our timekeeper. Okay. The district will inform all the candidates via electronic mail as to the board's selection once concluded, and our goal is to complete the process by the 24th in time to seat a candidate as a board member at that next board. Again, thank you for being here and glad to have you with us. Thanks. Let's begin. Welcome, Jessica. I have the first question. All right. All right. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself, including your and your children's involvement in Weisburn schools and why you are applying for the vacant seat. Okay. Um, well, I am a mother of two children in Weisburn. One of them is in a very dirty baseball outfit behind me. Um, Haven and Tegan are in kindergarten and second grade at Anza. And I've lived in the neighborhood in, within Anza in Del Air for the past 12 years. Um, well, we picked living in this neighborhood because of the diversity. We picked this neighborhood because of the school districts. And um, ever since we moved, I you know, looked at who was on the school board and looked at the school board and thought I would love to at some point serve my local community in that way. Um, my day job is I run a policy consulting firm that does social impact consulting. And so to make that real and tangible, for example, we work with the LA Unified School District, um, often to do like equity work, help them develop arts equity projects, or we work with Los Angeles County Metro to help them develop CTE programs and programming. I just flew back from Lake Tahoe Community College District, where I was working with them to help them um, develop more robust community um, engagement programs to, um, you know, do all kinds of stuff. So my day job is directly applicable at that point in that long-winded way. Uh, so I'm a policy analyst, I'm a mother, and I really love to be involved in the community. Um, you asked about inclusion or my involvement in the local community as well. Um, I um, am really involved in the Del Air Neighborhood Association. Um, I you know attend school events when there used to be school events that would happen in person. Um, and I've been trying to get involved in WEF, uh, and I have not yet. Um, but I would love to, you know, be involved in any way possible. Um, and for the past painful two years, I've been leading the Greenway Committee trying to get that stretch of land, which is unused railroad tracks of BNSF, converted to a green walking and biking path, et cetera. So, um, thank you. Number two, uh, being a board member demands more personal time than attending meetings twice a month. Will you have any problems attending regular meetings, plus occasional workshops, conferences, and subcommittee meetings? And then how flexible is your work schedule, and would your employer allow you to miss work on occasion to let you participate in certain board activities? My employer would definitely allow me to. <laughs> <laughs> she can be, you know, she can drive hard, but she will let me. Um, but um, in all honesty, I am not currently on any nonprofit boards. I have, for the past three years, been avoiding being on nonprofit boards. I've been asked by many and I have declined all because they haven't been the right fit or it's ended up being some consulting job or I've connected them to someone who was a better fit, et cetera. Um, I really do think that being on my local community school board is the best use of my time, effort, knowledge, and I would not mind giving my time in that way. Um, I do have two small children. There might be times when it's you know, difficult, um, but I am used to going to conferences and workshops, et cetera, and I would make it work. Thank you. Welcome. I have a two-part question. Great. How do you see, how do you see the difference between what board members do and what the administration does? First part. Second part, what type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and employee organizations? Hmm. For the first one, my answer is, I don't know enough and I seek to learn, quite frankly. Um, I see the board as an entity that is to um, engage, advise, um, also be a learning organization and also be the ears of the, the community when possible. Um, but again, I've helped a lot of school boards in a professional capacity, but I've not served them, which I know is extremely different. And so I would seek to be a learner 
in the beginning part to make sure I don't get that equation wrong because I know it is different and I know it's important to um, not come in, you know, voluntary or anything, but rather in a collaborative manner um, because I have never been a K-12 educator. Um, I teach at UCLA Extension. I don't think that makes me an expert <laughs> in being a K-12 educator or principal or superintendent. Second part of your question, can you please remind me? Yes. Uh, what type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and employee organizations? Great. One of the questions I was going to ask you all is, is it normal for a board member to kind of do a listening tour and, you know, meet with the employee organizations or with staff or with principals or have coffee to kind of make sure that you're constantly listening on the, on the ground level to hear what staff have to say? Um, I, I know that um, that's what I would want to do. I would want to make sure that there was, you know, open lines of communication, that there were opportunities for people to share their concerns and also opportunities for people to share, um, you know, their ideas, um, but not in some closed door, back channel, weird side politics way in an open forum. I think there's a slippery slope there. And I think it's really important to keep things away from, hey, Jessica, I know you, at some kid's birthday party versus a professional forum. So the closer we can be to making those professional forums, the better and more uh, open and you know communicative and partnership uh, relationships can be. Yeah. Of course, we have another two-part question. Okay. Based on your observations of the board, what do you think are the most essential attributes of a good board member? Hmm. First part. Second part. Describe for us some experiences you've had, either in your personal life or your work, where you've successfully used those attributes. Great question. Um, I think the most important attributes of a board member are to seek to understand, right? Seek to understand, withhold judgment, really understand. Um, unfortunately, it's just the way public, the public office works, is you usually hear from two sides of the spectrum extremely happy people and extremely upset people. And so that leaves a huge gap if you're not seeking to understand. Um, so I think that is the most important element. Um, the second most important attribute I think is to be a learner. No one's an expert in anything. You get into elected positions um, or interviewed in positions, I should say in this situation, um, because you don't know everything and you're hopefully usually you know, willing to learn. Because there's no way you could all be experts in the policies and suddenly in COVID and in how to instruct everyone at every grade, how to partner with the Vinci School, all these things. And so I think the most important second thing is if you don't have the answers, which you often will not, to know where to go to find them. Um, okay, that's, that's two of them. I'll stop there. And then the second part of the question is when have I used those in my professional life? Um, as a consultant, you often get hired um, to do things that you don't know the answer to. Um, and so I'll give an example for, um, in, in Ventura County right now, we're helping the South Central Coast Regional Consortium of Colleges. And we're working with them to help develop collaborative like, regional priorities for the whole Ventura County region. Um, I don't know enough about Ventura County. So the first thing I do is say, okay, well, what are the priorities? Who else should I talk to? Who are those people? And then I seek out all those individuals and organizations and groups, speak to them, learn what their needs are, what their concerns are, and really importantly, what's been tried before. Because I don't want to fall into the same challenge of trying something that was tried before and that failed, and I forgot to ask that question, so now we're stuck. Um, and the other piece, as I said, is, um, so I said, seek to understand and try to withhold judgment, right? Um, I think that happens every day, both in, you know, in my life as an individual, but also professionally, wherein I'm often facilitating meetings and groups that are, you know, hostile or openly combative, or they can't, they don't find the middle ground. Um, people often hire a consultant or bring cause impacts or myself in because they want a third party who's objective. They want a third party who can help people seek to understand together. Um, and it's definitely one of my strengths. Thank you. I have the next question. What is your vision for education in our community? And as a new board member, what would be your top three priorities? My vision for education is that students understand their strengths 
and are pushed in their growth areas. Um, also that all people, all, all youth are given an opportunity to learn to love learning because they are taught in a way that is in something, something that they're interested in. So for me, the way I describe that is through project-based learning or through individualized learning around things that they care about. Um, and, um, and of course, most importantly, you have to feel comfortable where you're going to school and in your environment that you are learning in if you are able to have that. So, you know, I, I know you have, there's the pillars. I'm going to blank on what all, all five of them are. I'm going to <laughs> five of them might be four, and I apologize. But, I mean, those are the pillars, right? I mean, you need to make sure that people feel safe. You need to make sure that they are able to enjoy this enriched learning environment. Um, and then the second part of the question was, what are my top three priorities? Yeah. I think that... I have to say, renormalizing schools. I mean, we can't ignore that we're still in the midst of a pandemic, right? And so COVID, to ignore that as one of the priorities is ignoring a lot of what you all have had to deal with, whether by choice or by pushing or by CDC or all the things for the past two years. And so COVID, period, is uh, one of them, right? When I say normalizing, I don't mean pretend like it's not happening. I mean, how can we make sure that we're correcting for um, the learning loss that's happened, et cetera? How do we make sure that teachers and staff we've lost are, are replaced in a great manner so that we actually have enough people in the schools, those types of things. Um, the next one would be um, individualized, well, figuring out how, how to make sure that all students have, if not an individualized learning plan, are able to continue to grow and progress. Um, I made some comments to the school board a few months back about math instruction. And I recognize this is extremely difficult and logistically challenging. But our district, has, or and our district has done a really great job with English instruction. We have, and if you look at the percentages of proficiency, our math percentages tell the number. We are not as good at instructing youth in math as in English. So I think it's really paramount that we figure out how to fix that, how to correct that and make sure that all students are, you know, advancing in math instruction as well as in English, you know, in the reading, et cetera. Um, the third priority is it's a mixture of um, making sure that the whole community is engaged in the school and the learning community, and also improving communication with the Vinci schools. Uh, as a unified school district, our district involves, you know, the K-12 schools, the middle school, you know, the K-12 includes the Vinci schools. And there's so much misunderstanding, so much miscommunication, so much um, frustration. That's both historical, some of it's not, not true or it's confused or they don't have the full story, but um, I think that always falls back on it can be improved by communication and robust community engagement. And I think that's really important. This district is the only thing that unifies the community where I live, right? It's the only thing. Um, I, I used to be very interested in being an elected official and I looked, well, there's no possible place I could, I could be on a commission. I could become at the time it was Mark Ridley Thomas or I could be on my local school board. There's nothing in between. So this is also the only entity that can bring the community together. And I think that's really important and a really um, big, big thing to lift. Thank you. You're on question six. Great. What do you think about the Da Vinci Charter Schools and how do you view the relationship between the district and Da Vinci Charters? Good question. Um, how do I view the Da Vinci, the da Vinci Schools? Um, I, I think that the Da Vinci schools and project-based learning um, are phenomenal and they're lauded and they have so much to teach people and are teaching people across the nation. Um, I also don't think that that model of a school is what everyone wants and that's been repeatedly said by the community. Um, that being said, I think that a lot of um, that is miscommunication that they don't understand, people don't understand. I think that the, there's a lot, a big rift in the communication that has happened. And I think that also when unification happened, um, you know, back when I was running for school board a year and a half ago, when I was listening to community members, there's so much frustration because people thought they were going to get a traditional high school and then they got Da Vinci schools. Um, that wasn't necessarily a bait and switch. It was, they didn't have the full sword in the front and it was the plan to do Da Vinci schools. And so I think that that is gonna be an extremely difficult, if not impossible thing to overcome for some people. 
but I think that we need to try. I think it's our charge to try. Um, I don't know if I entirely answered the question, but. Well, the second part was how do you view the relationship between the district and the mission chapters? Not strong. Um, it can be improved, something to, something to work on, something to seek to understand, something to learn about. Um, I, I do sit on the um, Da Vinci School, the like, Communications Employer Advisor Board, Advisory Board. So I often go to the events where, as, a, as an employer, I'm giving advice to teachers for project based learning, et cetera, um, and just supporting in that way as a community member. And I drag my husband to those events as well, <laughs> and whoever else I could find. So I'm, I'm aware of that entity in, on its island, and I'm aware of Wise Firm's um, efforts as much as I think I know, right, on this island. But the fact that I think of them as islands is the challenge. Write the notes down here. It's okay. Uh, question number seven. What would you do during a public meeting if you strongly disagreed with the position taken by another board member or a statement another board member made? Hmm. I think it, I know for me, it depends on what the statement was. If it was something that was, um, just to use the extreme here, if it was something that was offensive or to some individual in the room, I would strongly disagree at the moment, in that moment, right? If it was something about, if it was something that was biased or derogatory for someone else, I would make a statement right back immediately, respectfully, but making sure that it was called out when it needs to be called out. Um, if it was something about a decision um, that didn't need to be decided upon in that exact moment. I think there's a time and place for making statements and for disagreeing. Um, I also think that it would be really important to um, seek to understand again. You know, I would ask why do you believe that way? Can you explain further and make sure that I'm understanding and not assuming um, what was said. Um, this is a little bit different kind of question. If a parent phoned you about a problem his or her child encountered at school, what would you advise the parent to do? And what would you do after that conversation? Hmm. First and foremost, follow the chain of command, right? I mean, if anyone goes straight to a school board member, um, without first following chain of command, that's a, it's a challenge. So I would first say, oh, have, let's say if it was about their teacher, for example, have you talked to the teacher yet? Yes, have you talked to the principal yet? Yes, have you written to the school board? I would advise them to make whatever the statements or concerns were formalized in either a board statement or a letter, so that way it's on the record. Um, I would also advise, advise them if they hadn't had those initial conversations to do so. And I would ask, why have you not? You know, some people, um, might be fearful. Some people might not know the chain of command or might be a language barrier, et cetera. And so those things, I would, you know, I would figure out what was going on there. Um, depending on what the conversation was about after the phone call, I think I would respect their ability to try to move forth and make put that information where they wanted to put it. Um, a perfect example of this is, um, I have gotten approached by many parents on a multitude of different issues. One is we need school uniforms. One is we need, I don't know, you name, we need no masks. We need all kinds of things. People randomly have talked to me about. Um, and I have not elevated those to anyone. I've told them how to themselves go through the process. Um, and if they really care about it, um, they, they would and could. Um, often people try to go the easiest route. Um, and if there's one person, if it's one voice and not multiple, I think there's something to be said about seeing how much they want to pursue it. If it was something, there is a caveat though, is if it was, for example, it was a parent that had like, for example, uh, student disabilities and they didn't have the tools and resources needed to them, I would then contact the right person and connect them to those things to make sure that they had um, that access. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have the next question. What would you say differentiates you from other candidates and or board members and what valuable qualities, uh, experience or attributes do you feel you would bring to the board? Um, 
for, for 10 years, right out of college, undergrad, I was a direct community organizer, issue-based community organizer. I helped unionize female laborers in Guatemala, then did immigration reform at San Diego, then criminal justice work in North County, San Diego, then education reform in Los Angeles. Um, and that serves as the most important base of any education I've gotten, even including my master's, et cetera, because it taught me how to talk to people across the spectrum. It taught me how to engage communities and how to build organizations. Um, what makes a leader is followers, not just a loud voice. And I think that that root, that root of community organizing background um, is a huge strength that I bring to everything I do and, and could bring to this board as well. Um, the second thing is, the nerdy policy wonk in me. I do have a master's in public policy and I am a statistician by trade. And so given that, I pair my community organizing people skills with um, making sure that everything I do is rooted in data and background and research. And I think that once again, that seeking to understand that knowledge seeking is something that I would also bring as an asset to the, to the school board. Um, and the third thing is something that is just much more basic um, that the school board does not currently have, which is I'm a current parent within the school district. Um, and there's just something to be said about having to schlep kids around to and from that being really in it. And nothing could, I could never explain to anyone what it was like to homeschool two children um, for two years while also working from home to you know, people in a household with busy jobs and lives. It was crazy. Um, and I think that there's things that are noticed just by, by default of being a parent that this board does not currently have. Thank you. Number 10, last question. Uh, effectively two parts. The first is what are your thoughts about running for the vacant board seat in November? And the second, any closing thoughts, remarks, or questions? Um, thoughts about running? Um, yes, I, I do plan to run. Um, I am not excited <laughs> about uh, campaign per se, been there, done that, lost that. Um, and um, I would and will run again. I know there's opportunities. Um, and then, yeah, so that's that one. Um, as far as closing statements, I don't, I don't have anything prepared. Um, I just, um, even just answering these questions tonight, I would love to serve on the Wiseman Unified School District School Board. I would love to be, you know, learn from all of you and have you answer these questions on your own and let me know what I don't know. <laughs> Um, and teach me how the heck to do this thing called being an elected person in our in our community. So um, that's yeah. So thank you for your time as well. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. you coming in today. Thank you very much, Jesse. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you very much. We will thank now you. go to recess. We will now reconvene for our final candidate as she arrives. Welcome. Hello. Hello. What a nice chair. <laughs> Be careful leading that. Yeah, I'll try not to. <laughs> Well, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, we know uh, we appreciate you applying for this position and take the time for the interview and application today. Uh, the interview will last uh, up to 30 minutes or up to 40 minutes, scheduled for about 30 minutes. Uh, there will be about 10 questions, and Dr. Silvers will be our timer. Okay. Uh, the district will inform candidates via electronic mail as to the board selection when concluded. And our goal is to complete this process and ideally state a candidate as a board member in our next board meeting on the 24th. Again, thank you for being here. Uh, we will trade off asking questions. Glad to have you with us. And Roger, start us off. Welcome, Molly. Thank you. I have the first question for you. Okay. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, including your and your children's involvement in Wiseman Schools and why you are applying for the vacant seat. Okay. Uh, well, I am a, a longtime resident of the Wiseman School District. I've been here for about 14 years. We had my daughter about 10 and a half years ago. She's currently a fifth grader at Lincoln Gate Student School. Um, she's a Gate student. Um, she is a swimmer. 
on the swim team. I have lots of friends at school who are also on the swim team. So um, it's just a wonderful community. The school district is really a wonderful community for her to be growing up in. We're very, very happy with it. Have been happy with her amazing teachers. Um, she's really been uh, allowed to flourish here. So that's really made us really happy. Uh, I am currently on the 138th Street PTA. I'm the parliamentarian and have helped with the limited activities that we've been able to do. Um, you know, I do a lot of technology stuff, so I'll often be on the backside doing things in organization and, and configuring things, but also, you know, going out in person when we can to help with um, events for school. Um, and uh, just, you know, volunteering in the classroom and being involved with the teachers. I'm, oh, I'm on the school site council. So this is my second term on the school site council for 138th Street School this year. I'm the parent chair. Um, we always attend all of the school district events because not only is it finding enjoyable, but it's a great way to connect with the community as well. We really appreciate that about the district. I am applying for this position because I think it's such an amazing opportunity to really serve this community more. Uh, I feel very connected um, to all of the, we have a group, you're, I'm sure you're aware of Whitebird Moms, um, and I'm very connected to the women in that group and the families who are all Whitebird families. Um, their children all go to our schools. Um, and just have the, uh, my experience with the school district is that we have such a good culture here in this district, and we do so many good things for this community that I think this is an opportunity for me to really step up and be more for the community. And too, with, with my background in education, I feel that I can really benefit the board in serving the school district um, with that experience. Thank you. My question's next. Being a board member demands more personal time than attending meetings twice a month. Will you have any problems attending regular meetings, plus occasional workshops, conferences, and subcommittee meetings? And then second, how flexible is your work schedule and would your employer allow you to miss work on occasion to let you participate in certain board activities? So I do have the time to commit to board meetings and board activities. And I am a school district administrator. Um, and so my schedule can, can be flexible. As long as I have advance notice, it's, it's not usually an issue at all for me to, you know, trade time or take time off in order to participate in um, events that happen during the work day. I have a two part question. Okay. How do you see the difference between what board members do and what the administration does? First part. Second part, what type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent and employee organizations? So the first part is basically the difference between the board members job and the administrator's job. I, I feel that the board's job is to give direction and make decisions about how the school district will run. And the administration's job is to make that a reality in uh, pursuing whatever actions it takes to uh, realize those uh, goals of the board. And can you repeat the second part? Absolutely. What type of working relationship would you like to see between the board, the superintendent, and employee organizations? You know, positive <laughs> <laughs> and friendly relationships are always best. And one thing that from the public side, um, just seeing how this board interacts with the administration and also with the employee organizations, it seems like it's a very friendly and collegial um, environment where you can get things done. And I think that really um, the basis of that is respect for each other. Uh, everyone understanding that each, each entity is doing um, you know, what they feel is best in everyone's best interest with the best of intentions. And starting with that assumption, I think that we can really get along and have good working relationships. Okay, if you can, if you can there are two part questions, of course. Okay. Um, based on your observations of the board, what do you think are the most essential attributes of a good board member? First part, okay. Second part. Describe for us some experiences you've had in your personal and professional life where you've successfully used these attributes. So attributes of a successful board member, um, you certainly have to be collaborative 
and a good listener and um, willing to speak up and um, for what you believe is right, but also willing to listen and make adjustments according to others' thoughts and beliefs and feelings about things. Um, really, I feel that you know you, you guys have to work collaboratively, and that's really your number one job. <laughs> and having a contentious relationship doesn't serve anyone well, um, not the board, not the district, uh, not the school for the children. So um, I, I think really just, you know, being a good listener, being collaborative, those are, those are definitely the most important attributes. Um, in my job, I have to use these all the time. <laughs> um, so I work on the Ed Services team um, in my school district, and we actually have a really high functioning team because of our collaborative nature. Uh, we all have our own jobs to do, but also we believe that everyone else's job is our own as well, and that we will, we will work together to get something done. Uh, whatever it is that we have to do, whether or not it falls under our um, duties or not. Um, and we're very supportive of each other as well. Um, projects, uh, specifically, I have had to put together several um, committees and several um, kind of um, projects with that involve stakeholder input. Uh, for example, our digital learning initiative, which is about six years old at this point, that was before we went one-to-one um, as the technology district administrator, it was my job to see how everybody felt about that and put together a comprehensive program that would support the student use of technology one-to-one -one, um, at home and uh, on campus. And so the, I had to work together with the IT department, with the educational services department, with the parent groups, with the school administrators, with the teachers. We even, I got together with IT and we brought in sample Chromebooks and we brought in groups of students to look at them and check them out and give us their opinions on which ones they liked. Um, and also working with the Board of Education to make sure that the funding was there, which we, you know, we were first funded by uh, a, a tax, um, a tax, uh, for, sorry, a property tax. Um, and then now we're funded through uh, LCSS. So um, just putting all of that together required a lot of pieces and working with a lot of different people collaboratively and, and Fiscal department too, which is often, you know, they speak a different language than the rest of us, but we all have to work together to get it done. So, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have the next question. What is your vision for education in our community? And as a new, as a board member, what would be your top three priorities? My vision for education in our community is that we are serving each student individually to their needs, um, individualizing education as much as possible via the services that we have. And I think actually we do a, a really pretty good job of that. There are a few areas of growth that I would prioritize. Um, one is, I, I feel, I want to say that I see we're serving our English learners. I see that I drive my daughter to daycare and I see the English learners lining up to go to you know their program early. Um, I see our special education students being served. I see our struggling readers being served. I see our low performing students getting support. And I do struggle to see how we are serving well our high achieving students. And I do also hear that sentiment from um, other parents in the community of high achieving students where they're, they're not super excited about the DATE program. They're not, they're not really sure what's actually happening in the classroom to, to challenge these students to their their greatest, um, their greatest achievement in the classroom. So I think that certainly we need to take a little look at how we are serving students um, of all achievement levels. That would be one. Uh, another, um, ed education-wise, I would really like to see us develop further our language, our foreign language offerings. I know that we have a little bit in middle school, um, maybe seventh or eighth grade. And we have brought in outside organizations for the elementary level, which are paid typically after school programs. I would love to see that more integrated um, as an offering that we can give to all of our students. We have a very diverse community. Um, the school district is over 50% Latino. Um, so I really feel that you know, we would probably benefit at least from offering some Spanish um, because those Spanish speakers can flourish in their own language and in English as well. And that would be great. Great for our community. 
Uh, lastly, I think that uh, my priority would be uh, working on the uh, relationship with the VINTI and making sure that our students can matriculate seamlessly over to those schools. Because I know being a charter organization, it's kind of peripherally, I, I'm not really sure about what that relationship is, but I just want to ensure, you know, when my daughter goes to take that um, jump, that we are uh, very well articulated between the middle school and the high schools, making sure that that is handled efficiently. Thank you. That was a good segue to question six. <laughs> What do you think about Da Vinci Charter Schools <laughs> and how do you view the relationship between the district and the Da Vinci Charters? Um, I think the charter schools are a really interesting offering for our students. Um, um, coming from my school district, we have a lot of CTE programs. Uh, we have a lot of um, academies where our students can specialize their education to their interests. So Da Vinci has taken that next step and truly made whole schools around specific, um, you know, topics and interests. So I think that's really great for our students. I, I do have concerns for students who maybe they're not really interested in any of those offerings and where do they fit in best? Uh, because I do feel that those schools are very specifically focused on their areas. And if a student doesn't have that kind of interest in the project-based learning, they, they may find it really challenging. Um, so that is one concern of mine. Uh, with the charter schools. Uh, the relationship between the Whitefern School District and the charters, I, I don't see, um, I don't really see any issues from the outside. I'm sure that, you know, you guys clearly have a very <laughs> different experience working with their board. Um, it, it does feel a little bit separate though. And it's a little challenging feeling that Whitefern is a unified school district when our only high school offerings are a charter school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. What would you do during a public meeting if you strongly disagreed with the position taken by another board member or a statement another board member made? You always have to consider very carefully how you react to what you say in public. And so I think it would depend on whether what I had to say was um, important for the public to hear. Um, if it's just a personal issue that I have with it, perhaps it may not be worth voicing. Um, if it were worth voicing, it would be important to word that very respectfully and noting that, you know, I respect what you're saying and I, I hear what you're saying and I know that you are saying it with the best of intentions. Here's how I feel about that. If a parent phoned you about a problem that his or her child encountered at school, what would you advise the parent to do? First question. And then what would you do after that discussion? I would advise the parent to contact the principal. I think uh, it's really, really important that um, chains of command are not skipped in these types of situations. Um, and However, I would also then advise Dr. Silvers of the conversation just so that he was aware of what was going on. But I would definitely certainly want to allow the principal the opportunity to solve any issues first before we jump in and go crazy about anything. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the next question. Okay. What would you say differentiates you from other candidates? and our board members, and what valuable qualities, experiences, or attributes do you feel you would bring to this board? Um, I feel that one of the standout difference is that I am an educator and have been in education for over 40 years. And that perspective, I feel, is pretty unique on this board and among the candidates um, for what I learned about them. Um, they, they don't have those experiences. So that, that's one standout thing. Um, I'm sorry, what was the rest of the question? And what valuable qualities, experiences, or attributes do you feel you would bring to the board? Um, I have a lot of experience working with our school board, so um, I feel like I kind of know how things work um, from, from my side, and that may be transferable to working on the other side of the table um, as a board member. Uh, also, just 
uh, knowing how the education system works from the inside could definitely be a valuable um, perspective to have on the board when decision making and you know just uh, having conversations about the things that we need to do. Yeah. Number 10. Oh, next question. Okay. Two parts as well. Well, what are your thoughts on running for the vacant seat in November? Because this is a short term. Mm -hmm. And then any closing thoughts, remarks, or questions? So I would absolutely run for the seat in November. Uh, I think it's, this is an amazing opportunity to get seated if, if that happens. And then to be the incumbent in an election is definitely a great place to be. So definitely uh, something that I would do. And um, just my closing remarks, this is what I wrote in the end of my application, is also um, a philosophy that I stand by as an educator is that students come first, and that we always have to keep that on the top of our minds with whatever we are doing. Um, and it, you know, it may not seem directly re related to our students, we, we always have to ask ourselves, is this what's best for our students? And if the answer isn't yes, we need to go back and reconsider how we can do things in the best interest of our students. And that philosophy would follow me to the board. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you me. coming here today. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to see you all. <laughs> Indeed. And thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter really wanted to see <laughs> my interview. See mom in action. Yeah. So <laughs> try to be a good mom for her. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you, you very night. much. I'm not sure if we adjourn, if we go to recess or adjourn. Yeah. So at this time, are there any other issues to bring up at this time for discussion? Uh, no. All right. Then at 7.38 p.m., uh, we will go, uh, we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you very much.